So uh, this is not the only thing you need to do in a, in a gas turbine. The problem of gas turbine is that uh, it's not only about uh, uh, doing combustion in this zone here. This is one sector of a gas turbine. You also need to make sure that the walls will survive. You know, if you have a temperature of 2000 K, there's no way the wall will survive if you don't cool them. So what you need to do is to cool the walls here. And you need also to cool the walls so that uh, to inject here additional gas so that when the, when the air reaches the turbine, it doesn't burn the turbine. So you see here, for example, this is what we call dilution air, dilution jets. Those are cold air jets mixed with the burn gases here so that when you reach the turbine, which is here, you will not burn the turbine. So let me explain that a little bit better. Um, by the way, I'm going also to, this to give you this one. This is another piece of uh, combustion chamber. This one comes from a, a, an helicopter. It's a turbomaker combustion chamber. You can take a look at its shape. You will see <coughs> the small holes on the walls, which are very important for cooling. And uh, you, you recognize the shape, of course. It's only a piece which has been cut. Normally, you will have, of course, the complete chamber. So for an engineer working in that field, the main question is the following one. I am injecting here kerosene, here I'm injecting air, and here I have a turbine. The turbine will receive the hot gases directly. And the turbine, if you don't cool the pieces which are here, you will just kill the turbine. It will just melt away. So it's really a problem of cooling these things. Uh, by the way, I've also taken here a very small piece of turbine. It's uh, what we call a vein. This is the kind of things which will have to resist to the temperature field. And you have an idea here of the size. And of course, it's a, a problem of what will be the temperature in this system. So it's a problem of temperature. How do you cool that? Well, uh, as I said, you're go going to have to make sure when you add here some cold air that the temperature here is small enough, low enough, so that you don't burn the turbine. So as I said, here you get 2,500 Kelvin. Here you're going to have 1,500, and the turbine is just behind it. If you make a mistake, you burn, the mi you burn the turbine right away. It's the end of the engine. And if you fly in this engine, it's also a problem for you. Now, this is a picture of an helicopter engine. Uh, helicopter engines are quite complicated because they need to be small. So the air here is entering to that side. Coming here, here you mix it with kerosene. It burns. What you see here is the temperature field. The, the, the chamber makes a turn here. And here, you don't see it really well. This is the first part of the high pressure stator. This is where the turbine is sitting. So here, if you are sitting here, you receive all these hot gases. And the question is, how are you going to survive to that? Well, it's, uh, it's not easy. <laughs> this is the same thing you have in your hands, receiving all the hot gases here. Uh, it's a problem here to make sure that you, you get cool enough so that you can survive to these hot gases surviving here. So uh, when you talk about combustion science for gas turbines, our first problem is make sure that we don't burn the combustion chamber. Of course, if you burn the combustion chamber, that's the end of the chamber. It's the end of the story. At the same time, we need to minimize pollution because you cannot sell your gas turbine. And then we want to maximize efficiency and minimize fuel consumption. So, the, the optimization of this system has been here for a long time. It's very important to say that if you look at an aircraft today, or even at a car, they all look the same. Okay? The shape, for example, of an aircraft is not something uh, which uh, you can really optimize much more. They all look the same because they all found the same optimal. Well, if you look at combustion chamber, they are all different. You take a French chamber, a German chamber, an American chamber, all of them are completely different. And this is a strong suggestion that no one has really found the optimum way to build a combustion chamber. They are all different. So one of the reasons for the problems here is the following, is that when we optimize combustors, we don't always get what we expected. I must say quite often we go into problems. This is an example. It's an old movie from NASA taken at 2,000 frames per second. So it, it's, it goes much faster than what you see here. Uh, you have here a mixture of air and gas. And here you have what we call a backward facing step. And here you have combustion. So you can see structures here. This is cold and this is hot, typically 2000 Kelvin. If you take a chamber like this and you start optimizing it, you change things. One of the things you can change is, for example, the amount of fuel which you have here, or the amount of air, or the pressure, or the temperature. 
quite often what you obtain is this kind of reaction. That means the flame doesn't do exactly what you expected. In this case, instead of staying where the flame should be, it goes away, it goes upstream here, and we get what we call a flashback. That means the flame, instead of burning quietly here, oscillates. This is another geometry, but you will see the result is the same. We have what we call a combustion instability. And very often, when we optimize a flame, after a few tests, we get a system which is optimized, but which gets unstable. And if it's unstable, you cannot use it. And uh, the examples of combustion instabilities are everywhere in the recent uh, life in, uh, of, uh, of combustion, and they are a major problem for development of many combustion systems. If a flame is unstable, for example, if a flame here goes where pla to places where it shouldn't go, then the engine dies. <coughs> this is an example of the, the, the famous uh, rocket engine programs in the United States, the one they used to go to the moon. Uh, you can see, for example, here, this is not the design, okay? This is what happened after combustion instability. You can see the melted part of the chamber. Same thing here for an industrial gas turbine. The flame came back to this place. It shouldn't have been there, but then you, you, you basically burn all these, all these pieces of metal. Or here, this is uh, an injector for uh, uh, an aircraft gas turbine. You can see here this whole piece melted, went away. And of course, when this happens, uh, if it's in a real aircraft, you kill people. Uh, now, the other, things we, the other thing which is not good about this story is that uh, even if you don't burn things, you vibrate the system. The combustion stabilities lead to oscillations of everything. When things start oscillating in a gas turbine, it's not good news. For example, uh, all in the compressor and the turbine, everything is adjusted in a very tight way. If things start vibrating, you can have uh, a vein touching, for example, the casing, and then the whole engine will explode, and you will lose pieces, like, for example, this one here. This, this is a piece of an engine. This is the second engine in an aircraft which exploded, and this piece came through the aircraft and hit the other engine. So this is an example where the pilot lo lost one engine and right away he lost the other one. And how did he do that? Well, this piece of uh, engine went through the, the plane and hit the other side. So that's no good, of course. Now, vibrations are something you want to avoid. This is another example of uh, bad vibrations. As soon as you get something which can create oscillations, you can go into problems. In this case, obviously, they have a problem of uh, uh, unsteadiness, something which is vibrating too much. And uh, after a while, if things vibrate too much, you get into problems. I think the pilots were probably complaining about it. Now, if you, if you do that in a lab, and you try to create that, the same problem in a laboratory, so this is what you do. You take a combustor and you, you add walls here so you can look at them. This is a picture taken at DLR in Germany. And uh, if this flame starts getting unstable, this is what you observe. Not good. Okay, when you start having these kind of problems, you have to, to work on it. Uh, the nice information about that is that in the last few years, maybe five years now, we, have, we started being able to compute these things and to predict them. Because up to a recent time, basically, we could not predict combustion instabilities. That means we would build the aircraft, build the helicopter, try it, and if it wasn't stable, then say, oh, okay, how do we fix it? And you see that's a very significant risk, of course, for industry if you, at the last moment, you can have a big problem like this one. So again, this is a field where combustion science is not uh, strong enough at the moment. We are not at the point where we can really make sure that we can say this system will be stable, and we still have to rely on many tests. OK, um, let, me, let me show you something else now. Uh, since we are uh, talking about combustion instabilities, I would like to, to show you that these things don't have to don't require very sophisticated equipment. So uh, uh, this is an example of flame. So here you get gas. You can buy that for 25 euros. Uh, and here we get what we call a burner. This is a very simple burner, okay? Much, much cheaper than the one I've, I gave you. So the objective of this guy is just to mix air, 
the air of this room with the gas here and to do a flame. This is a burner and this is a, a combustion chamber. Okay, you have to imagine it's a combustion chamber. The real chambers are much more complicated. What I want to show you now is what happens when you put a flame in a combustion chamber. Why do you do that? Well, there is no interest of having a flame in free atmosphere like that, except if you need light or if you want to waste the fuel. If you want the flame to do something useful, you have to put it in a chamber, either to recover the heat or to produce mechanical power. So as soon as you get a marriage between a flame here and a combustion chamber, interesting things may happen. So um, I hope I don't burn anyone today. Last time I just burnt one student, so it's just... So, so this is a simple flame, blue flame. Um, you see it's nice because it's blue. When it gets yellow, it means it's making soot. We talk about soot later. And this is typical, the story, the story I'm going to tell you is typical of what happens in industry. Industry is producing burners and chambers. So the first year, they have this burner and this chamber and they sell it to a customer. And basically what happens is nothing. Okay, you just hear a little bit of noise because the air is accelerated in, the, in this chamber. And the second year, they have another customer asking them for a lar larger combustion chamber. So they take this one and nothing happens. Okay? The flame here has no problem. And so the third year, they have sold a chamber big like this. They have sold a chamber big like this one. They are selling this one, which is just in between. If you believe in linear problems, you say, okay, if this works and this works, the last one should work too. So this is what's happening. And you see here that for this chamber and for this chamber only, you get something new. You get what we call a combustion instability. What's happening here? Well, the acoustics of this tube in my hand are just right to get coupled with the flame. And when this happens, you get an instability, exactly like the one I've shown before. Now, you do that with a very small burner like this here, it's not a problem. You do that in an engine and you, you lose the engine. So let me show you what's happening inside. Here, these tubes are not transparent. I'm going to show you what the flame is doing inside the tube like this when you get into an unstable mode. You see the flame here, and this flame is actually uh, oscillating. So, uh, and it's doing vortices, and uh, it's exactly what is generating the sound that you hear. And so you can see here combustion instability is just the problem that you have a an acoustic field interacting with a flame, something you don't want, or you would like to avoid, and it does not happen all the time. It happens only in certain cases. The problem is that you cannot predict it, and you can see how dangerous that is. And this is what's happening, for example, in companies like Turbomeca or Snekmark in France. All the companies have the same problem. They have sold two chambers which were working fine with their burners, they sell a new one, which is just in between, which looks almost the same, and then suddenly nothing works anymore. The system starts shaking, and then uh, they cannot sell the engine, and then it's uh, panic mode. So here, what they need is combustion science. So let's, let's go to talk a little bit about science. 